Resistance is the linchpin of the PlayStation 3 launch. The Sony published IT game that it hopes will force you to rob banks and swindle the elderly so that you can get a PS3 on launch day. It promises indulgences that dot the dreams of gamers. Slick science fiction stories, gameplay that numbs reality, graphics that shame celluloid, and a place to play with friends online. No more time for anticipation, only answers. Because Resistance Fall of Man is ready to baptize you in fire, blood, and death. It's good, but is it $600 worth of good? The What If Machine gives you Earth circa 1951. World War II never happened, but the Chimera did. They mysteriously appeared and quickly enveloped Asia and Britannia in the last bastion of Europe. They've called in a favor from the US of A, waking the states from an isolationist coma to help save the world. You play as Nathan Hale, not the Connecticut spy who regretted that he had one life to give to his country, but a soldier with a buzz cut and an interesting physiological response to the Chimera virus and morphing properties. He's kept his humanity, but has gained healing powers and insights that match his enemies. Over the course of 72 hours, Hale will travel all over England as he protects His Majesty's properties as well as sabotages and spies the Chimera. Some exposition comes through brief cutscenes, but most unwraps via long narrated pieces over stills, with gentle pushes and dissolves. Think of a Ken Burns documentary, any one, and you get the idea. Radio communiques pepper the actual gameplay, fleshing out the plot at key moments, along with the occasional quip from a comrade. While the slideshow accounts tell the story and make sense as it comes across as someone's recollection, it breaks away from the show-don't-tell mechanic that works so well in games. It's also a sure sign that there simply wasn't enough time to complete the game to this standard in time for launch. It's an intriguing story, but it comes across a bit blasé for all its efforts. Here's to hoping that the game ships with a big sticker that proclaims weapons designed by the guys who made Ratchet and Clank. There's a plenitude of guns and grenades in this game. The variety runs the gamut of favorites like shotguns and machine guns to the more esoteric instruments of death like the Chimera's Augur, whose bullets drill through walls and cover to peg any target seeking refuge. Alternate firing creates an almost impenetrable force field. Only Augur fire, yours or the enemies, can get through. All the weapons feel like viable tools of execution, though limited ammo supplies will keep you on your stock machine gun and the enemy's bullseye gun more often than not. Later levels give way to more advanced weaponry that demand some exploration before going gung-ho. There's a sense of wonder playing these guns, where they almost feel like virtual toys. The attention to weapons hasn't led to a deficit in level design detail. War-ravaged England never looks so fine. The dilapidated houses are scattered with various sundries and the streets reflect the carnage they've been through though the mysterious lack of roundabouts is perplexing. The outdoor levels are cavernous, but there's little chance of getting lost or not knowing where to go next, since you'll usually have some troops with you on these ventures. Indoors, you'll find tighter quarters and solo action in more close-knit webs. If there's really any fault, it's that the levels are too detailed and may cause a hunkering for spelunkering. Rarely will this turn up a clandestine document or stray health container. It's all more pretty window dressing, draping atmosphere. This is a game of domination, not of exploration. Multiplayer is handled through thoughtful menus and offers extensive stat tracking and clan management. The various maps are designed for huge 40-player deathmatch bouts or more thoughtful and smaller 16-player capture the flag rounds. Designed with the same intent as the single-player levels, the canopied layers, asymmetric vantage points, and ruined earth provide great arenas to conquer and litter with the corpses of your buddies. If you've enjoyed playing first-person shooters with a PS2 controller, the 6-axis will do fine. If you've ever had issues, they're here to stay. The new trigger-like R2 and L2 shoulder buttons aren't really utilized as well as they could be, and ducking while trying to alt-fire can really test your dexterity. The tilt sensors only come into play when a rogue chimera latches on and must be shaken off, and become second nature in a heartbeat as their gruesome visage dominates the screen. The enemies aren't the smartest kids on the block, but they'll take cover from fire, though they seem fairly dismissive of grenades. The one disappointment is that all the enemies look primarily the same, just in different sizes and with different guns. Hunkering robots and diminutive, if numerous, hatchlings are the main exceptions. Taking any of them down becomes a preface of weaponry and ammo management. Concentrated sniping can clear an area with flare, while attempting an exhilarating run with a barrage of bullets, followed by some melee checks, can also land a messy victory. 
Occasional vehicle levels offer a reprieve from first-person slaughter and are both forgiving and fun. Tanks are nearly indestructible, and the British Jeeps seem to be bullet resistant, with great drift and suspension with tires perfect for running Chimera over. While entitlements or gamer achievements never materialized on the PS3, they live on with Resistance's skill point system that rewards you for accomplishing various goals like using weapons in a specific way or gathering intel. Cryptic titles give vague hints on how to accomplish them and should stretch out the single player experience. Beyond the single player campaign is the expansive multiplayer with two different sides to play, weapons that are locked at the offset of the single player game, and a ranking system to work through, the PlayStation 3 has its first online hit. Resistance is a fine first generation game, and one that goes beyond showing the potential of the hardware and moving it into actualities. The campaign is a decent length, the weapons are tremendous, and the details are hyper real. The game teeters from a Call of Duty atmosphere to scraping its fingertips on Halo's ceiling, while still cobbling a feel that's inspired but infused with its own personality. It's fantastic and clever, but never crosses over to the realm of the resplendent, due to some almost invisible irks like the status quo AI and the lackluster, if solid, presentation of the storyline. The multiplayer is the real deal and is destined to sit on the throne of data packets for the PS3 for the foreseeable future.